Hey, this is Dan Blewett. Today we're going to talk about um, something I've been kind of curious with. You know, we talk about pitching mechanics, and you know, when you have good pitching mechanics, it enhances your ability to throw strikes. But how do we actually throw strikes? You know, is a question I've sort of posed to myself these last couple of weeks. Okay, say I have good mechanics. But how do I know to get the ball on this side of the plate or on that side? You know, up or down. You know, curveball in the middle or curveball on the plate. How do we differentiate that? What does our body do? to get the ball here versus here, and our mechanics are the same to this point, to this point, et cetera. So what I found is that there's basically three things that are gonna keep you in, your, in line. Number one, your eyes. If you pick a good focal point, catcher's mid is a good focal point. Pick a good focal point, that's number one, that's gonna keep you in line with your target. Number two is your shoulders. Once you have your focal point, your eyes are locked on it. If your shoulders are locked on it as well, it's your upper arm, whether you're this guy, or this guy, as long as you're humorous, your upper arm is on line with your focal point. Eyes and humorous, that makes two. And then number three is the center of your chest, which is going to sort of represent your center of mass and the axis around which your body will rotate. So basically what it boils down to is this. So I'm on the mound. You know, I have good mechanics. I reach the balance. I land close, et cetera. We don't want to assume that we're going to land the same spot and then my arm is going to be the difference maker between arm side of the plate or glove side of the plate. There's just, like I said, I assume there was some difference in your mechanics that was governing you to get the ball on that side or the other. Once your mechanics are consistent, then again, how do I get it there? What am I doing on this side versus this side from one pitch to the other? So basically, the three things, the eyes locked on a focal point, the shoulder locked on a focal point, and then driving your chest to finish to that focal point. So it'll sort of look like this. If I'm going to go to my arm side of the plate, my eyes are on the spot, I land my shoulders on the spot, and then from this point, I'm going to take that center of my chest. It's going to drive forward towards it, and you see my arm's going to exchange and be right on, on the spot. And conversely, if I want to go glove side of the plate, I'm going away. Everything, my mechanics are still the same. I focus down and away, shoulders go down and away, and now the center of my chest also drives down and away, and here I am again, arms finishing, returning to that same spot. <coughs> so, once we have good mechanics, and we have the idea that if I lock to the visual focal point, my shoulders driving towards that focal point, and my chest is lastly going to drive to that focal point, we should throw the ball wherever we want it, pretty much whenever we want to. However, that's not the case, obviously. The, the more elite athlete you are, the more often you're going to do that. And here sort of what I found is the errors, why we don't. Even when we're doing all those things, what can go wrong? So number one, I call it a mental error. So when you're clear, you allow your body to relax and to do what it's programmed to do. So if I have no hang up I'm not worried about the batter making contact. I'm not worried about hitting the batter. I'm not worried about, you know, leaving this change up up. My body is going to be free. If I'm thinking, uh, change up, then my arm maybe gets a little bit of tension, a little bit of anxiety through it, and now it makes an error. I don't get it to that spot because I, I get taken in my arm. So that's what I call a mental error. Any loss of focus, any distraction, any loss of confidence is going to derail you from, even though you might be locked with your focus on your shoulder and your, and your chest. Number two is a spin error. So again, once we get, even if I'm locked, eyes, shoulder, I'm good to hear. The third part, taking the chest to the spot, is, in, is really, really crucial. So right here, I can make a spin error. If instead of driving forward my chest, I instead start to over rotate. In this, in, in this error, I'm gonna, you can see my fingers, I'm going to cut the ball a little bit, and I'm going to spin away glove side from my spot. <coughs> rather than driving right at it. Then we have what I call a drag error, which is sort of the opposite. I can be eyes good, shoulders good. If I'm a little bit anxious and I show my chest a little bit early, now my arm drags behind, and now the ball is not exchanging from my chest to the spot. Now it's a little bit behind, it drags, and the ball doesn't get where you want to. And the fourth, I would call, Fatigue error. And this is again, 
say you just threw a lot, you know, short rest, or you're on regular rest, but you're just not used to it yet. You have know, luggage in depletion, you're a little bit tired towards the end of the game. All these three might be there. You might be eyes, chest, or I'm sorry, shoulder and chest, but with a little bit of extra fatigue in your arm, now maybe your arm just lags a little bit and you're here instead of here. So through trial and error, I have a lot of kids who and when I say kids, I mean just my young athletes in general. Um, you have good mechanics. They get to this point. They get, they land close. They do all those things, but they still lose focus and they don't throw as many strikes as they should with repeatable mechanics. And when we bring a focus to their focal point, whether or not they're driving to their spot or not, and then whether or not they're driving their chest at it, rather than rotating, spinning, or driving, that's usually the difference maker. So lots of kids who have 85% of what we would say maybe is a perfect mechanical um, set. Those kids can throw a lot of strikes if they can take their chest. That's the important part. You're going to rotate naturally when you land. You have to. You can't throw like this with your hand closed. You're going to rotate, so you don't need to rotate. You need to think about activating your core a little bit more in an anterior sense. You know, this is anterior, this is rotary core. You need to think about a little bit more crunching your core down. Pull that center of your chest towards your target, and the arm is absolutely going to follow it. So, again, everyone says you need to have good mechanics to throw strikes, but okay, what do good mechanics do for us? How then, when, we, when I have good mechanics, how do I know this side, that side, up, down? How do we differentiate? I think that's the, these, you know, these three points, the visual focal point, driving the shoulder to the focal point, and lastly, driving the chest to the focal point. I think that's how we actually throw strikes. Thanks.